All right. This is Nathaniel Avila reporting from Dallas County, and who am I here with today? You are with Clara Avila, as usual, reporting from Dallas County. What about Cat over there? Ghost? She's sitting right here asking for my attention. Uh, I think she was look, looking the other way, so... No, 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 no. She wants my attention, okay. as she does every episode. Uh-huh. All right, so the first one we got is Ita for saying you should have thought about that before you procreated. Okay. <laughs> Starting off strong. Mm-hmm. What do you think, Clara? I, I have no context. I can't, I can't, I mean, it's starting off strong. Yeah, but what if I come up to someone who's like, oh, you should have thought that before you appropriated. You should have. Did, did you think I'm a butthole? Or I mean, I would think that, <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. It's coming off really strong. All right, so let's see this. Okay, so my ex and I have a 13-year-old daughter, Nicole, quote unquote. Nicole has several medical conditions that require a lot of attention. She will need some sort of in-home assistance for the rest of her life. While we have an aid to help a couple of days a week, it is still a challenge. The outcome of Nicole's condition became clear when she was two. At that point, my ex and I agreed we wouldn't have any more kids because it wouldn't be fair to anyone. There'd be no way we could focus attention on two kids. Someone would lose out in this situation. We divorced when Nicole was five. We originally had 50-50 custody three years later. My ex remarried, and his new wife, Callie, is nice. Uh, My ex did say that she didn't understand the severity of Nicole's condition. I figured there was a learning curve. Eventually, Callie basically uh, said she wanted to be hands-off, which I respected. Though I wondered how it would work considering Nicole lives with them half the time. Last year, my ex and Callie had a baby. I was a little surprised given my ex was always firm on not having more kids, but I figured it wasn't any of my business. He did begin to complain that it was a lot of work juggling Nicole and the baby. I sympathized, but didn't really know what else to say. Recently, the venting got worse. He said Callie yelled at him for taking Nicole to physical therapy appointment instead of helping her with the baby. He He brought up potentially having Nicole stay with me more. I wasn't entirely shocked, but it peeved me off. I said Nicole was his daughter. He can't just abandon that responsibility. He asked what was he supposed to do about the baby. I said, maybe you should have thought of that before you procreated. Okay. So there's the line. There's the line we're all here before. Um, There's the this is dark web moment. Okay. Um, And then the credits rolled. (laughs) (laughs) And so, I mean, really... We discussed this 10 years ago as to why it might be hard to juggle two kids. Why did you think having another would be a good idea? He got quiet and said Callie wanted a baby. I said that isn't enough of a reason and maybe you should have thought of harder before bringing more life into this world. The conversation with, ended with me saying I'd call my lawyer and we could arrange for him to have less custody as I'd rather my daughter be properly cared for than be viewed as a burden. Callie called me that night very upset that i had made my ex cry and that i said her baby shouldn't exist how does it feel to make a grown man cry op (laughs) (laughs) why are you laughing clara i don't know it's a little funny okay i said that's not what i said completely more that they didn't think it through okay she called me a jerk ita what do you think ita um Uh, this one seems like a a sticky situation because oh i mean if it if we boil down if we boil it everything down, to is she justified into saying that's what you get you should have thought of that before having crew created because that's really what's on the yeah that's chopping really block here. that's that's what we're evaluating yeah Ah, I don't know. I what what do you what do you think? I personally think I think what she said is true. I think and, there's merit and, behind and it. I think is she wrong in saying it? Probably not. 
Probably not. Because she did warn him. She did warn him, and how he reacts to that, that's that's on him. That's not on her, mm. how he reacts to that. And I think he's crying because he knows it's true. Yeah. And he knows that you're right, OP. And I don't think you should feel bad about that. There's... That's a thing he needs to do with. And then Callie is probably the main villain in this, is the Disney villain I, I guess this. if we were to assign roles of heroes and villains. Yeah, I think Callie is the, is the Disney villain of this story. Because I think she convinced her husband to having a new kid. Have a baby. And even though he probably didn't want to, but I, I there might be more to that story. We don't know but, all the information, of but course. She, but now, <laughs> she, what she said, what, what OP said to this guy is, tr- is, is coming around. And it's actually, like, really becoming a lot for this guy. And I think... And I think what he does need to do is probably maybe hand over maybe 75-25% custody on OP so to make sure that Nicole is properly cared for. Yeah. And that you can focus your time on the baby and you're yeah. not pulling your hair out like OP predicted. Um, but do not completely... I wouldn't... Don't label it as abandonment. Though. No. Because it, it's not... It, when you have a a child that needs extra care, you have to take that extra care. Mm-hmm. Especially if you have, you know, another child to take care of. Mm-hmm. It's like, if you're not prepared to, you know, properly care for one of your children, how are you going to be prepared to properly take care of both of your children? Mm-hmm. I say not the butthole. Yeah, I'll agree with you. I say not the butthole. Husband, not the butthole. Husband, not the butthole. Um, but Callie, Callie butthole. Probably a little bit. Callie is the yeah. butthole. I mean, like, I can understand, you know, wanting to have, quote unquote, your own child. Yeah. That is, you know, from your own body. I mean, but they like, should have probably talked about this before they got married, It, it really, yeah. This should have been like um, a conversation about, hey, you know, I have my daughter from my previous marriage, marriage, and that she, you're co-parenting. she needs, you know, extra help. Maybe we should wait until a certain time when we're properly settled and we can like give her proper care. Then we can think about, you know, having a baby because mm-hmm. that's a lot to take care of. That's a lot to handle. Mm-hmm. So let's see what other people of Reddit have to say. Yeah, let's see what the people of Reddit have to say. I assume Callie had this dream of Nicole magically disappearing over to your place. So she and X can have just their happy trio. You're basically correct to hold them accountable, especially if Nicole has the mental capacity to be aware she's being shut out. Nata. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I would agree, but I don't. I wouldn't put like any a whole lot of blame on on the ex husband. I, 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 I think Callie's. I, I think they're right to saying that Callie is probably um, is like twisting her mustache, trying to like figure out how to get rid of this Nicole. Like she's like the evil queen, and, and she's like a Snow little, White, a little evil stepmother. Yeah. And um, let me see, Nata, it's the truth, and honestly, Callie is the one in the wrong. I agree. Yeah. If Nicole is with them and needs to be somewhere, when then. Then her father had better take her and Callie can deal with the baby. What do you think? I mean, yeah. You can't be upset at a father taking his daughter to physical therapy. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. If, if, you, if you have the resources and you need the help, hire a nanny. I think they did have a I did think they did hire a nanny. Well, then uh, what's the problem? I think that they had her to, hired a nanny when they were together, but I'm not 100% sure. I don't know. Okay, Nata, I go to the lawyer who originally handled the divorce. If you had one and basically tell him them what's going on, say you wanted it to increase in child support if you're getting it from your ex being more hands off or your ex continues giving the same amount of care. Once it goes gets before a judge, tell them the same thing you told us and the lawyer and that it's non-negotiable more money and your ex's involvement remains the same up to your ex and the judge 
Okay, I think that's probably the best way to go about it. It's, uh, probably. Who wanted to be hands off? Because I know someone wanted to be hands off. Who wanted to be hands off? Was it Callie? Was it Callie? Uh, recently, the venting got worse. Yeah. Um, Nicole's condition. Yeah, Callie said she wanted to be hands off, so she didn't want to help at all, Mom. and she basically gave like. <laughs> <laughs> made her husband do all the work. And then she's uh, complaining about not having help with the baby? No, he's complaining that he's not having help with the baby. I thought she was complaining Let that she see. wasn't getting any help from him, from the baby, because he had to take care of Nicole. Yeah, no, yeah. No, the husband, okay, says here, Sarah, sit here. He did begin to complain that it was a lot of work juggling Nicole and the baby. Ah. Which makes sense, because, yeah, it is a yeah. lot of work, and but, having but no didn't, help didn't, from your but wife. But didn't she complain about him having to take Nicole to physical therapy? Yes. So. And that's not founded, and that is not a very good thing to be upset about. Get that out of your mouth. Like, <laughs> your dad doing dad things? How dare you? How dare? So, yeah, uh, you're not the butthole. Nope. Um, I don't think so. Yeah, okay, let's Just see. being realistic about it. Yeah. Aita, because I lamoured when my mom told me her Roomba fell into the pool. Okay. This sounds I mean, stupid. That sounds really funny. It I don't, sounds I, really stupid. I, I don't blame you if you lamoured. Okay, I'm on the phone here with her, and she's in her winter residence in Florida. Uh-huh. Quote, parentheses, snowbird. Okay, oh, winter residence. We can. We already get information about this. And telling me that, like, oh, we winter in Florida. <laughs> Ooh. 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 I have a beachfront property that my... We have several <laughs> residences. Well, my parents-in-law wants to move in. But, <laughs> but I don't want them because it's only for us it's young only people. It's for us young people. We're, we don't run a geriatric. <laughs> we don't run a geriatric. <laughs> Stop. Okay, so... Um, okay, uh, she told me that she was cleaning her house and then left the screen door open. And I'm like... Where are you going with this? Because my mom kind of rambles a bit with stories that go nowhere because she's old and dumb and I don't like her. Nathaniel, <laughs> that's not what it says. No. Please read it properly. Do not lie to our viewers. Okay. Um, screen door open. Our listeners. Okay. Uh, stories that go nowhere. Like she's like Abe Simpson from the from the Simpsons. Yes. Um, like she is old. Yeah. And then she says... And then she says the Roomba was missing and she found it at the bottom of the pool. <laughs> it completely caught me off guard and I'm howling with laughter. And my mom's like, it's not funny. That's a $400 machine. Ah! And somehow made it even funnier. And she's not making it easier for me because she's describing that apparently it didn't die right away for a minute. The little brush things were still going around. Like it was trying to dog paddle its way out of there. So my mom is angry that the Roomba wasn't built with some sort of safety device in case it falls into water. Like flotation bags are supposed to pop out of it like chitty chitty bang bang or something. <laughs> and at this point, I'm in literal tears from laughing so hard. So mom's angry and Roomba is dead. <laughs> I'm probably not invited to Easter dinner. <laughs> Maybe your mom may need to like chill out. Dude. Maybe your mom no, should I mean, learn how to laugh at I herself mean, once I in mean, a while. I, I, I can understand being angry about something expensive getting broken or like you know but that's a really funny situation it's really funny i don't blame OP i don't for i don't i don't blame him for laughing at that i think because it is funny that is and very funny. maybe your mom should like chill out maybe i mean if she has a winter residence i think she can afford a 400 hundred dollar roomba i think you might be able to afford another roomba yeah <laughs> and like um and like, like uninviting, like not inviting your daughter. Not for, inviting you for, for Easter dinner. dinner, or like your kid for Easter. Dinner. I don't know if it's a girl or boy. Because they were laughing at a were... Roomba. I mean, that's a that's a really funny scenario. Yeah, it's really funny for laughing. I mean, maybe that's a bit extreme, a bit of an extreme reaction for doing that. But I mean, come on, you gotta la learn how to laugh at yourself. So definitely not the butthole. <laughs> laugh at whatever you think is funny. Probably not. But it's what are the comments? Okay, I said, Nata, let her be angry and send a condolences note for a de the dead Roomba. Yeah, they also talked about, like, the Roomba, like, it's, like, a living like thing. Like, it's, like, a living thing. And, like, <laughs> the Roomba's dead. The Roomba's dead. dead. I mean, like, you would say that your phone died, so it's, like, it's the same thing. It's just an electrical appliance. Yeah, but you can charge it. And it's not like you, you I wouldn't be all, like, the Roomba's dead. Ah. 
<laughs> the Roomba is dead. Have a little funeral for it. Have a little it. funeral for the Roomba. Bury it in the backyard. Why do you have flotation devices? I'm going to sue Roomba <laughs> Incorporated or whatever. Why were there no flotation devices to stop it <laughs> from drowning? Okay. Um, edit. Buy a new Roomba for Easter saying has been resurrected. It's name Jesus. It's, been <laughs> a lot. it's seen the light. That's terrible. And then the OP responds with, that's a good idea. I can sud flowers with a little Hallmark card that they make for people who lost a beloved pet or something. I'm going to get to work on that. I don't know if your mom, she, she seems to be kind of like a little, like a stick up, stick in the mud a bit. So I don't think she'll find humor in it. So I mean, like, <laughs> it's really funny though. OMG, OMG, I am about to replace my Roomba, and you have given me such fantastic ideas on how to give my current buddy a proper funeral. Water burial. I just don't know whether to send him directly in as I play taps, or if I should make some little flotation devices to get him in the middle of the pool with sparklers to say goodbye. You're, tell your mother that you should have inspired others. You should, she should be proud. That's so funny. Like everyone's all the here just taking, so the, taking the taking the whiz. Out yeah. Nata. OP. First of all, the situation is hilarious. Secondly, this is the risk people have when keeping non-native species in their house. <laughs> what if it had fallen into the pool and just went around vacuuming things? What if it outcompeted the native street sweepers? You can't let that thing out into the ecosystem and not expect some kind of consequence. Okay. Yeah, everyone's kind of like just like yeah, having fun with this. Everybody's just um. So yeah, not the butthole. Not the not, butthole. Not the butthole. So we had two pretty light-hearted ones, um, for the most part. Like like uh, nothing too drastic. Alrighty, let's see what we got. Yes. My twenty-nine female, so the OP's twenty-nine female husband, mm. twenty-eight male, mm. has known about my affair. How oh. can I save our marriage? What the? Okay. All right. Let's see what we got. I've been together with my husband since I my sophomore year of college, and we got married five years ago. It's been amazing, but I kind of miss being young. A couple times a week after work, I go to the same bar when I don't want to sit in traffic. There's a guy that would I would run into there and went from a friendship to harmless flirting. There's no such no. thing as harmless flirting. Not when you're in a relationship. Next thing you know, I found myself having an affair. Oh, the next thing I know, I just the had an affair. The next thing I know, there. all of a sudden. <laughs> That's it? That you couldn't even finish the joke? <laughs> The next thing you know, I found myself... Yeah. The thing is, I love my husband, and the guy was a younger version of my husband, making me feel young. Oh, to be oh, young. Oh, sure. Okay. To avoid going into, into too much detail, my sister recently found out, and I and alerted my husband directly behind my back. <gasps> that uh, that, that witch. Sense. That witch, Clara. <laughs> this is like a soap opera. Uh, my sister told me... That he told my husband that she told my husband and she told her and he told her he already knows and cried to her. Um as a real telenovela. Mm -hmm. Um I didn't believe her and I thought she was saying that because she wanted him, me to tell him when he found when she found out. However, she knew something I didn't tell her. I have been begging my husband for us to start trying for a kid, but he has been Unequivocal in saying it's not the right time, despite our precious discussions about having kids at 28. Uh, decisions about having kids at 28. My baby fever is high. She told me that an affair is why he doesn't want to have a baby right now. I never told her about him not wanting to have a baby right now. This prompted me to investigate. Because I'm the victim. <laughs> no, she didn't say that. I know she didn't. And I started digging into his phone, snooping with his password like a good of wife course, would. Of course, like a good wife would. Like a good wife would. Everyone knows the secret to a good marriage is, is privacy. Secrets, secrets and privacy and is for losers. Privacy is um, non-existent. Yeah, privacy is for losers and chumps. So, let me see. Um, we found... He found out months ago, and it caused him to be depressed. He is taking talking about it with his friend. She keeps telling him he should leave. And at first, he was hesitant, saying he's going to try to remind me why I married him. She told him to just leave, and he can't stay with her, and, her wi and he can stay with her and her wife in the guest room. 
in one of the texts, he said he was checked out and is sending apartment listings. Um, this all makes sense because in the beginning of the affair, he was extra nice. We went on a trip when he was trying to remind me why I married him, quote unquote. A few weeks ago, he seemed to start acting completely different. I feel horrible. I had no idea he would ever find out. I blocked my AP on everything, and I'm ready to save my marriage. You should have been ready to save your marriage before this whole thing even started. Yeah, and I think she's only mad or upset or wants to change because she got caught. Yep. I I have my own stances on cheating, which is that I believe cheating is unforgivable. So you don't think she's forgivable? She... I, I don't, personally. I, it takes a lot to rebuild the trust mm-hmm. that gets broken through an affair. Mm-hmm. And I think also is the way she's kind of reacting to all this is like how she kind of like views herself as like the victim. It, and yeah, it, it seems that way a little bit. Like how saying language like my sister told my behind my, my sister back. behind my back told and, and he had found out months ago and I only found this out because I snooped on him. And then and then she was all like, oh, the next thing I know I was having an affair. It's not the my fault. The next thing I know I was having an affair. That is how cheaters talk. Cheat. Yeah. Once a cheater always a cheater it is very difficult for people to break that habit do you think she eats all the pumpkins clara cheater cheater pumpkin eater yeah do you think she eats so much pumpkins you know what nathaniel yes i think she does she eats nothing but pumpkins for every meal oh my goodness (laughs) she she, she eats nothing but pumpkins she goes to the pumpkin patch and she just eats all the pumpkins was this are they asking about the butthole thing or is this just relationship advice i think this is relationship advice and my advice is uh divorce you messed up divorce is my advice if you had an affair did you really love him in the first place that's not how, like, you know, I, I always go back and forth about this sort of thing because technically humans don't mate for life. Uh-huh. Um, I mean, we want to and we try to, but the fact of the matter is, you know, there's divorce. We fall in and out of love. Yeah, marriage was supposed to be a sociopolitical thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not going to get into all of that because okay. I don't know enough information mm. to even, like... Supposed to like create alliances and stuff. Yes, yes, yes. It's supposed to create. It's a monetary. It's an exchange. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what it was before. Mm-hmm. I mean, sometimes it still is, even now to this day, in mm-hmm. other places. Not so much here. Well, that's not true, because there are still families that are, <laughs> you know, that like to marry. That other like to people. marry, like you know, bigger, bigger, bigger wigs, like companies and. That sort of thing. I don't know. Family stuff. Mm-hmm. Eh. Like, oh, my daughter. Is, the fact of the my, matter is, is that. Marry my friend, my. Yeah, marriage isn't son, always whatever. about love. Mm hmm. You know? And in this case. It is about love. Though. It is about love. And you have broken that. You know, you've broken your vows. You have broken the trust. You. He very clearly has lost his love for you because of what you have done. And he did try. And he did try, (laughs) but you missed it. Why? Because you were blinded by being young again. Oh, to be young again. Like, this excuse about, he's just a younger version of my He's just a younger version of my own husband. What does that mean? It doesn't mean anything. You love your husband. It's what you said you did. You're supposed to. I, I mean, is it possible for someone to love more than one person? I, I, I I'm not sure. I think so. Yeah, but I mean, but like, not, not at the same you, time. Though. Not at the same time. I don't know. That's yeah. I mean, There's also like the various different different versions of love. Also, there's various different versions of love too. Yeah. I mean, in this case, I assume what you felt with this man was infatuation. Infatuation, you know? and her husband is romantic love. But and the husband should be romantic love. Yeah, should be romantic but love. But when you, infatuation important. and romantic love, uh, you know, get bashed together, interfere with one another, oftentimes that romantic love, poof, kaput. 
Is she and a there's nothing you can do about it. Is, is she, she the butthole? Yes. She's a she's a sewer butthole. I believe and anybody. Why did you think that her husband didn't call her out on it though? Uh, when he first found out, how oh, did he even find out? There's a lot of there's a lot of things that could go into it. You know, sometimes you might be embarrassed about it. Like, what did I do to make my partner cheat on me? And we see we hear a lot of stories about the guy cheating on mm-hmm. the girl, but in this case. It is the the lady cheating on the Ooh, husband, which happens. Both happen. Which happens, but we hear more of the other one than than one than the other. Um, well, that's and, because the men are always going to read it. Yeah, and then <laughs> and then and then she's all, and then I guess he was all like, "I will save this marriage." I will remind her why she fell in love with me in the first place. Well, because he still loves her at that point. Yeah. He doesn't want her to leave him for this other person. He mm-hmm. doesn't want her to have an affair. And then she did he not He wants catch... her to choose him. And I think, I don't know, maybe that was like his, his Hail Mary latch ditch effort. Probably. And then once he find out that she didn't, she kept on seeing that this guy afterwards. Just... I guess he was like, I'm donezo. Yep. As he should. And I think my relationship advice is that you, uh, you messed divorce. Up. Um, and, um, yeah. Okay. Let's see what the people are rated have to say. Yeah. Um, so the only reason you stopped seeing this guy, so you claim in parentheses, is because your you sister found out. Yeah. He is right to not have kids with you. Mm-hmm. He should leave you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um... And then a quote from another guy, person. I kind of miss being young. And this is a response. In, in brackets. Laughs in old middle age, which is still a uh, far sight from old. And then quotes in, again. It went from a friendship to harmless flirting. Next thing you know, I found myself having an affair. Harmless uh, flirting is that word. It's such, a, such an oxymoronic flirting. phrase. No such thing if you're in a relationship. Oh, yeah. Oh, it went on its own, did it? Huh. You just turned away from the bar for a second and whoops, suddenly you were in bed together? Question <laughs> mark. Because it sounds like something you should call the cops about. But I'm guessing what really happened here is that you made a series of choices to cheat instead of take, talking to your husband or a therapist about why you felt like you'd missed out on spending your 20s making stupid mistakes instead of being in the kind of relationship most of your peers are starting to desperately want. The 30s are the new 20s, I hear. <laughs> for context clara laughed and then she kind of made like this scowl at me no after. i did not scowl <laughs> i made a neutral expression okay. um let me see uh your our my baby fever is high quote unquote that's a quote mm-hmm. oh sure because adding a kid to the mix will make you feel old and washed up if this is real Talk to your husband instead of snooping through his phone. Except that you probably messed up too much for him to want to try to fix this. And certainly for him to feel comfortable bringing any helpless dependents into this mess. And get yourself to therapy to figure out whether you really want to be an adult or not. Because right now, all signs point to not. I would agree. She really laid, This lady really laid it on. Um, also, um... Uh... Uh, what was it? Oh yeah, you can't have a baby with the sole purpose of trying to save a marriage. Mm, That's probably a terrible works thing. Never out, and only harmful for the kid. Mm-hmm. Okay, you don't love your husband. He deserves better than you. And then OP responds, "I do love my husband, but you're right. He deserves better than me. Right now, I'm f- focused on being the woman he deserves." Negative three hundred and sixty-four downvotes. Yikes. Yeah. And then they respond with, you'll never be the woman he deserves. Love doesn't do what you did, period. Yep. And then OP responds, I didn't do what I did because I don't love my husband. I did what I did because I was selfish and needed to get help. Also, I don't love my husband. <laughs> okay. And then she's, that got 60, 360 downvotes. Yeah. And then uh, they respond with, you clearly don't know what love is, which clearly mm. john lennon said love is all you need and she doesn't understand it so yeah you are the butthole um let's move on yep how can i tell my wife 34 female is planning to flee with my son uh, 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 what but, yeah let's see let's 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 give this a look see um 
I'm 34 male. Married life has imploded in the last few days. I'm, I have a feeling my wife, 39, 39F, is planning to flee in the dead of night or when I'm not around. Someone suggested that idea and now I can get this out of my head. Now it kind of sounds like a tinfoil hat conspiracy guy. Okay. It hurts, but I don't mind if she needs space. My concern is she will probably take her four-year-old son and I cannot allow that under any circumstances. She is an unfit parent to him. She hasn't spoken to me in two days. This is the first time she's sulked and brooded like this. Her friends and cousins are poisoning her against me as if she's, as she's been on the phone a lot lately. I would ask her what she's planning directly, but I cannot ass be assertive at this time because the balance is very shaky. I also don't want to give her ideas or probably rush her plan. <laughs> if what you, is happening? If you can point me to stories of wives who fled their husbands similarly, and that would help s to spot patterns. Or you could tell me specific things to that point to a person who is about to disappear. And if she's planning to conduct our son, abduct our son, I want to be fl able to flee first so our kid is in my care. At what? the <laughs> at oh. some time, I don't want to es make that move wrongly as it could escalate the conflict long term. I would like us to be a happy family again. This is some true crime ish. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I want us to be a, uh, a family again, but this is turbulent time. I need to use some leverage, especially regarding our son. She is she has also proven unable to parent him effectively, as this will cause him permanent damage. It's in our son's best image to be with me. Thanks for your answers. The uh, heck? Um, this guy sounds so unhinged. This is like erratic. This guy is like made up this entire situation in his head and is like freaking I out mean, about this made-up situation. He hasn't given us any other context other than what he believes might be happening. And it's probably not even happening. It's just happening all in his head. It, maybe. Mm. We don't know. And he doesn't want to talk to his wife. I don't know why. Um, well, he said because he believes that if he talks to her about it with her directly, it might give her ideas or speed up her plan. It sounds like it's something that he made up in his head. I'm really... Th <laughs> this situation is a bit concerning to me because now I wonder whether or not... Like, if he's just making this up just so that he can figure out how to flee himself with his own kid. Or if there's, like, something else going on. I'm pretty confident that this is all happening inside his head. I'm probably pretty sure that his well, wife is just upset with him for some such reason. I'm going to say it again. We don't know mm -hmm. all of the information. But I'm pretty... I can... You can say you're pretty sure pretty and confident. still be wrong. And be pretty confident and still be wrong. Uh-huh. But Just because you're confident about it doesn't mean that it's true. I'm pretty sure she, her his wife isn't going to flee with his son. We don't know that. Yeah, but I'm just going off of the information that is provided. What if information, we, though? About him being really unhinged. There's no information other than whatever he's said. That's all you're, I can go off of right you now. Can, you can say that he's unhinged, which he does sound unhinged. Mm -hmm. But, like... We don't know that for sure. Well, we're going to have to go with not knowing that for sure. Yeah, for I know. Now. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I know. But we can only go off of, of hunches and interpretations of the information that is given to us. Yeah, sometimes I'm, we can't... I, I'm iffy about that. Okay, so. Yeah, but sometimes there absolute, we can't go on absolutes because there's no absolutes given to us. But in in the, in this thing that is going on... I think this guy probably needs to go to like a mental a hospital. Doctor, whoa, hey! <laughs> probably needs to talk to somebody. He probably needs to talk to somebody. That is not the internet. Yeah, that is. He definitely should not be on Reddit right now. He should probably be in a doctor's office. Probably. And or, and I'm just like this. This kind of like makes me think like maybe this is like an abuser sounds like it trying to stop someone from escaping their clutches also sounds like it this whole thing about their fist for family is poisoning her against me my evidence she's on her phone it sounds <laughs> sketchy yeah it does sound sketchy um and i think probably the, her son and his wife is probably not safe around because this guy sounds like he's about to do some some sounds murderizing. Like he's about to do something. Do some murderizing, 
Um, so let's see. Okay, so he has a, a response. Okay. Um, he has a he has an update. Okay, update. I put air a, Apple Air tags in various items. She would definitely take with her in what? case of an escape. What? What? <laughs> see, the, 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 word, the words that he is using escape. Okay. You know, like what is yeah. she escaping from? You know, why are you saying escape? She he also says that he she he she's an unfit mother, but we don't know. How or How? why? What makes her an unfit mother? Mm -hmm. You know? Well, I know you don't know. Let me see. Um, I just think the game will be lost by that point, and I need the first game. mover's advantage. First mover's? Even what? if I follow her after she scrammed, which she doesn't even know if she's even planning that, the scene will look messy and can be presented as stalkerish in court. I think you're stalkerish already you in court. You are already being a stalker. You're putting air tags and everything. The scene will be messy? What? What is this verbiage? Mm -hmm. Verbiage. Yeah. Um, I think he is a very unhinged, delusional butthole. Definitely the butthole. He's very... I mean, this isn't even... He's not even asking if he's being a butthole. He's just asking for advice. And my advice is maybe go to the doctors. Go <laughs> see somebody because my, something is wrong. Because he's he's not even he doesn't even think he's wrong. He all he's asking is, do you have any other situations that's give, similar to this? Give me information that is similar to this about a a wife running away with their son. What? With their she, child. So they could like make a Netflix true crime documentary about it and stuff like that. <laughs> and then let me see. Um, what, then, what do the comments say? Okay, so let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Um, please check this post history before offering this guy sincere advice. Okay. Um, oh. Okay. Yes, this is a very situa dangerous situation. Uh, I do hope the wife really do run. I'm getting goosebumps from just reading his post. I can't imagine leaving it. Um, well, let's go into a little bit of a deep dive. Yeah. Let's deep dive on Because if this is a troll... Then I will be like, I'll be like, dude, what is the purpose of this? Let's see, Mister Mister Cramuz, um, his profile has been deleted. That's a good sign. Ah, that's a good sign. That's a good. That's sign. a good sign. Okay, um, his account suspended. Okay, yeah, that's a great sign. Okay, your other posts are ve posts are very telling. You should be concerned that your son is has been biting and hitting other kids, laughing at his peers when they're in pain, hurting animals, and had intentions of stabbing your wife. He needs mental health interventions and supports now before things become worse. Your wife being concerned does not make her an unfit parent. So that's why he's an unfit parent? Because what? he's... Her husband... Her her son seems to be kind of displaying... Showing some psychopathic tendencies? Yeah, she seem, he seems to be showing like signs of the McDonald's triad a bit, which is the telltale signs of a person becoming a serial killer psychopathic tendencies yes psychopathic tendencies like that and she seems to be concerned according to this comment and then he think that's bad and then he made up this scenario where he thinks she's gonna run away with him and he's all being unhinged about it and being paranoid okay he looks like charlie day and it's always sunny in philadelphia with the conspiracy board <laughs> um the guy deleted everything what's the backstory one person responded and here's another one his, and then this person respond. Another person responded. Basically, he lied to his wife that he has a criminal history, and also lied to her about his family history of socio sociopathy, and the fact that he's he's a confirmed sociopath and constantly lies. Now he wants to run away with his son before his wife runs. So, oh wow! Why would you even lie about something like that? Sociopath. Yeah, it's, this guy should probably be on a list it probably is on a list probably I mean, and you should probably <laughs> well i mean well you were right about him being in a mental hospital being, i think he well, should be in a mental hospital yeah well you should definitely be seeking help mm -hmm. so this dude entire post history on reddit screams call the cops yeah i agree um well, okay i guess we were both right in a sense mm-hmm um, so there's a lot of like missing pieces, but good luck. The people at Reddit are kind of filling in the blanks a little mm -hmm. bit. <clears throat> okay. I gotta be honest with you, man. So this is an actual like 
comment directed at this guy and not people saying like, ooh, this guy is yes. a piece of work. So from the very beginning, this whole write-up is giving me sketchy, mentally unwell vibes. I agree. Yep. Something about the language and turn of phrase made me feel like there was some off. I think it means something was off. Yes. So much so that I went back and looked at your post history. Bad mistake. First mistake. What do you mean first mistake? Because that seems to be where everyone kind of like goes. <laughs> like, like, let me look at the post history. Ah. Well, sometimes you have to. Sometimes you have to. Which highly supports my initial reaction. I cannot follow that under any allow that under any circumstances. She is an unfit parent to him. In quotes. In other quotes, her friends and cousins are poisoning her against me because she's been on the phone lately. Quotes, I want to be able to flee first so our kid is in my care. Okay, and then in response with, it sounds like the musings of a mentally ill and unparanoid mind, which I, I like yourself, am in, intimately familiar with. I am not a big fan of your state of social, a big fan of the state of social services, apparatus, or therapists, or psychologists. With that in mind, I would highly suggest you avail yourself and your son to them. This is a clarity moment in bold. Please, for the sake of everyone involved, do not do anything extreme or rash. Just get involved with the social services. Your family needs help. I would agree because this yep. post reads like the ramblings of a madman. Yes. And he seems like if this goes unchecked, he will probably end up on the news <laughs> and not in a good not way. Not in a good way. Yeah. So, yeah. He's the butthole for sure. This guy's a butthole for sure. <laughs> crazy, crazy butthole. Hey, hey, hey. Do you think he, we, he can be considered not the butthole by reasons of insanity? Is that a thing we can do? Is that a th- I don't, this isn't, this isn't lo- the court of law. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> well, he's definitely I, acting like a butthole. I, I don't sure. know if being uh, mentally ill, um, what's the word? exonerates him I from guess acting being, like a crazy being person butthole. okay so he, this guy's definitely the butthole um a very scary very dangerous butthole, butthole. who should probably, probably. stop save himself before he thinks about others right not now. to mention probably be a way more dangerous situation for him to take his son who is showing those same tendencies yeah and yeah for sure Mm-hmm. And, all right, let, let's move on. Maybe a little bit of a nice, nice, nice one, and maybe a more lighthearted one. Yeah, maybe. Ita for becoming to dinner basically topless. Now this is what I'm talking about. Oh my about. gosh! Now this is what I'm talking about. What, this... Can you read that again? Ita for coming to dinner basically topless. Okay, thank you. Because <laughs> you said that real weird, and I was like, did they type it like that? What did I say? Like you were like, they uh, am I, 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 Ita for becoming the topless. Becoming the topless. Something like I that. have become the topless. For, for becoming to dinner the topless. For I have become topless, the destroyer of tops. <laughs> okay, so here's one. I've dreaded posting for a while because I'm afraid I might be the butthole. Um, okay. Okay. We'll verify I mean, that. I mean, you could also just not do it. Yeah, you could but... also just not and decide okay. for yourself. But now she has, and now we are the judge, jury, Ha-ha. and the executioner. Wah-ha-ha-ha. But just, uh, but I just gotta know. So here goes. My parents-in-law and brother-in-law came to visit to stay and stay for a month with my husband, who's 27 F, and I, 28, female. After I had a baby. For context, if it makes any difference, I'm German. My hus- husband and his family are Italian. The baby was three months old at the time, and I breastfed her. Usually, I just nurse on the couch in the living room, but because company was staying, I'd go to my bedroom. After I nursed her, she'd fall asleep and take a nap, and I'd have some free time. Since family was visiting, I've tried to plan her naps around mealtime and spend time with family uninterrupted. My mother-in-law has this thing that when food is on the table, you be there pronto. Um, which makes sense because she's Italian. She's Italian. Um... Sometimes I'd be late coming to meal because babies can be unpredictable and she wouldn't fall asleep right away or nurse longer than normal. To this, my mother-in-law would barge into my room and announce food was ready, all impatient, and they started started the baby and made the process much, last much longer than it should have. The result is I had to eat much later than everyone else, alone, and the food was cold, left me fuming. More work to do with the baby and I'm secluded. This happens several times. I asked my husband to talk to her and explain that I can't always come on time. She talked to her, but she still did this 
all did all this anyway. So I simply decided to stop being late to the dinners. Next time she barged into my room and announced the food was ready. I came in without hesitation. I came in, uh, came to the table exactly as I was. No shirt, <laughs> half a bra, baby hanging on one boob. Nothing has was seen until the baby's head, as the baby's head covered up everything anyway, but still. Ensue uproar. Go something like, Mill exclaims, what the heck I'm doing at the table like this? I'm indecent. There are men at the table. Oh. Well, one of them is her husband. So. One of them is her oh. husband. I should be ashamed. I yell back, what the heck does she keep calling me to the table for if I'm not yet ready? I have no reason to be in my room alone with my baby while everyone else is out having a great time together. Brother and Phil are trying not to get it, <laughs> try to get in on the argument. Husband ushers me back to my room and scolds me, taking his mother's side. He means he gets I'm he means he gets I'm frustrated, but this action didn't help anything. But after that, Mill didn't bother again while I was busy with the baby. So what if I came to meals a little after everyone had startled, started eating? The roof didn't cave in. Everyone lived happily ever after. The end. Ita. Um, no. What do you think? No. I mean, you got the job done. You got the job done. You got done. the job done. So got the job what's done. the problem? <laughs> you, 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 did, you proved your point. You did what you had to do to prove your point, and your, the point was proven. That's it. We're yep. good. So, the end. Um, you can rest easy, OP. You are not the butthole. Nope. So, yeah, I mean, it is kind of goofy and kind of silly. And, yeah, I mean, breastfeeding is a very big, big thing. And I know this because I'm a guy. Uh-huh. <laughs> Let me mansplain bre- breastfeeding to you, Clara. Yeah, go ahead. So breast- I'm listening. So breastfeeding uh-huh. is when the baby uh-huh. feeds off the breast. Yes. Okay? So, and there you have breastfeeding. Uh... So, yeah, what do you think, Clara? Yeah, not the butthole. Not the butthole. She needs to feed her child. She's already, you know, changed things to help make sure everybody's more comfortable around it. I know there's, like, this whole big thing around breastfeeding. Like, oh, my gosh, I don't want to see... I don't want to see a woman feeding her child. That's disgusting. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, whatever. Don't they yeah. have, like, those like those covers that you do? Like you Yeah, they cover? do. But she's in the comfort of her own home. No, I was just saying that in general, if that's a thing that exists and they do. Yes, it is a thing that exists. Thank you. And people do. Thank you. But, you know, like... Let her feed her baby. Yeah, I mean, I if you want her in. to get there faster, let her do her process and don't mess things up by barging in and startling the baby. Yeah, I won't come in, just come in fee fi fo fumming into the room. And like, I like, get it. You, <laughs> you worked on the meal. The meal is ready. You want her to be there now. Well, guess what? That's not how time works, especially with a baby. Yeah. I wonder what food they're having. She's Italian, so there must Italian, be really so good food. Probably though. some nice food, some yeah. Some nice food. Uh, we got uh, the, the spaghetti. We got the rigatoni. We have uh, the fettuccine. What else do we have? The stromboli. The bolognese. Good stuff. Clara. I'm just I'm just waiting to see if you can, to see how many Italian quote-unquote dishes. <laughs> this is the only ones I can think of. You're going to get through. It's the only things I can think of. Capitavi. Capitavi. Uh, Fofali. I think that's another Fofali. Right? Oh, I have no idea. I don't know anything. So, yeah. Um, your mom, pro- your mother-in-law probably shouldn't be fee fi fo fo into your room, guns ablaze, and be like, come out of here. Um... And then being all and then being clutching her pearls, like, oh! What you do is you're asked. Oh. But it looks like she, the, the message got across and she stopped doing it, so yeah. that's good. I mean, um, probably caused some turbulence, but hey, you know. And your husband probably should have took in your side. Yeah, um, but you know, sometimes you're a mama's boy. Especially if you're Italian, because I know in Italy, like, being, even an Italian-American well, family is, like, number you know, one. It, it, family is very important, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, but that was a little bit more lighthearted. That was a little bit that. Yeah. Okay, so Ita for canceling my, our, our anniversary trip because my husband drowned my terrarium. 
Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Let's hear what it has to say. Um, I, 29 female, traveled across the country to visit a company regarding an incredible job offer. I spent two days touring the company to decide if it would be a right fit for me after years of self-employment. After meeting with the company, I visited my sister, who's 32 female, and her family a few towns over. We barely get to see each other because of work and distance, so it was wonderful to spend a few days with her. The family had a new had her new baby. I was gone for a total of eight days. <coughs> when I returned home, I was excited to spend the trip with my husband, 33 male, and told him about the trip, my visit with my sister, my impression of the city, etc. We were meant to be celebrating our anniversary and decided to put it off the decision about whether or not I should accept the job offer until after our anniversary getaway. I'd arrange for us to go on a luxury train ride because he's a big train enthusiast and we were meant to leave for a trip three days after I got home. This is when the problem started. There was a very large, closed, bioactive terrarium which I made with my mother 15 years ago. It was one of my favorite things I have of her before she passed. Oh, the terrarium no. was my pride and joy, and she and has came, come with me everywhere since we planted it. It was always super healthy and beautiful, and I've only ever had to open it four times to do a little maintenance and watering. My husband knows all this, which is why I don't understand why she decided to tamper with it in my absence. I didn't decide, notice the night I got home because I was exhausted, but the next morning I went to check on the terrarium to find it in a terrible state. The roots were rotting. The plants were dying and molding. He told me that the day I left, he poured a few cups of water into the vessel and sealed it again. What? I was so mad, I cried, and it turned into a huge argument because it's just a plant, babe. No. <laughs> and all you do is look at it anyway. He called me ungrateful and overdramatic, <gasps> and that I should appreciate his intention was to help me, and that he didn't ask because he didn't want to bother me on my trip. No. I ended up canceling our anniversary plans, partly because I was so upset I didn't want to go, and by party because I want to try to salvage the plants, and that would require time. He hit the roof when I told him, and is now sleeping in, separate, in a separate room, and refusing to speak to me because according to him, I'm being petty and trying to destroy our marriage. Am I being oversensitive about my plants? My friends are being evenly split, and I have pointed out that he was just being thoughtful, however misguided it was. Um... Just yeah. because you have good intentions does not mean that what comes from them are good. Have you ever heard of the phrase, the path to hell is paved by good intentions? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I think that was really dumb of him. That was super dumb of him. Super dumb of him to tamper with a thing Why? that he was never tampered with. For what reason? I don't know. Like, that was really silly and dumb. And... And I, I think what how she reacted is very justified. Yeah, of course she would be mad. And I don't think it's... I think the fact that her it's husband the... didn't apologize and say I'm sorry. And yeah. instead saying that she was being a whiny whiner for crying over a very sentimental, priceless thing that she had. Literally... Is very telling. The last thing she did with her mother. Yeah. Before her mother passed. That's, you know... And she's been keeping it. For 15 years. Yeah. And... Of course she's going to cry over that. Of course she's going to cry over that. And him being all like, it's just a plant. It's you know, just... It is that. not just a plant. It's not just a plant, man. Like, it's a it, whole terrarium. It's a whole terrarium. And it has... It, it, it's considerably priceless with the amount of sentimental value that it has. Exactly. To... Uh, to OP. And I think canceling... You... You... Canceling the... The... The trip probably is a good idea because even if you do go you're not going to be in the best of moods and you're not going to have any fun yeah and it's going to be a whole thing and also and you're you'll probably just be thinking about the terrarium the whole time yeah and then your husband needs to uh figure his stuff out and probably come to his senses apologize apologize and maze basically that and that's probably the only way the He's relationship can move forward taking accountability for his own actions He's definitely very not making accountability um and his own very dumb actions the very dumb actions and him like i didn't want to tell you i didn't want to, I didn't want to tell you because i didn't want to bother you but if, but if you had told her then maybe you were would have been able to salvage it yeah or you probably just wouldn't have done it or 
You probably just would, you should have just asked, hey, babe, do you need anything done to the terrarium before you go or while you are on your trip? And then she would say, no, babe, it sustains itself. I like how they all call each other babe in this, like, back and forth. I don't know. Like, <laughs> I don't know their names. What else would they say? Hey, babe. Hey, babe. Hey, babe. How are you babing? I'm babing. Oh, my I'm gosh. Ba- What's your favorite baseball player? It's Babe Ruth. Nathaniel. Oh, my favorite baseball player is Babe Ruth. Stop. <laughs> uh, What's your favorite candy bar? Uh, babe Ruth. Nathaniel. <laughs> is it, is it, you is it know what I'm trying bar? to say. Stop it. Um, But, yeah. Uh... Yeah, what he did was really dumb and stupid, and I don't think she's the butthole. She's definitely not the butthole. Nope, definitely not the butthole. Um, let's see what the people at Reddit have to say. Um, Nata, well placed, a well placed piece of malicious compliance. What? I don't think it has anything to do with that, anything. Oh, oh no, I was, I was looking at the other one. What? I was looking at. I was like, we we didn't do this the the comments for the other one because oh, I was still on this one. Um, the malicious compliance being the girl with the lady with the breastfeeding. Oh! I we did we didn't do the comments. We didn't on that do one. the comments on that one. We that, totally skipped past it. It's fine. Eh, it's fine. It's fine. Okay, so uh, on the terrarium one, um, Nata, I doubt your husband was trying to help. Firstly, if you opened it a few times, when he knows it doesn't get water that often. Secondly, he knows how much it means to you. You so should know that you should that. You would have taken care of it before you went and have left very detailed instructions. Also, how big was it? But a few cups of water been way too much, even if he was just being helpful. The you just look at it comment is so strange. That's what everyone does with their plants. <laughs> OP responds with, I've literally never had to open it or water it in the time we've been together. And I and even when I did water it in the past, it was never required more than a few tablespoons of water. I've talked about it before, but he clearly forgot. So, yeah. And then responded with, he didn't forget. He maliciously killed something you love, Nata. Yeah, it is kind of strange. Yeah. It kind of makes me think he kind of did it on purpose. I don't know why. Jealous of some plants? Yeah. What? what? You, he goes to plants. I think you're super attached to this terrarium. Time to destroy it. Time to get rid of it so you can pay only attention to me. Turn to me. I'm jealous to a bunch of chats. I'm jealous a bunch of plants in this terrarium. <laughs> so, and then another person says, is you're taking this job going out, uh, going to... Necessitate a move, necessitate a move that he's unhappy about, or change the balance of who the primary breadwinner is. This seems to be this seems like a t- uh, a tantrum followed by gaslighting. Nata. Um, edit. He is feeling jealous and emasculated, though he will never admit that. He sees you advancing further out of his league, and his scared people and his scared people, or worse, you, will start questioning why you are with him. Um, he's also feeding his ego by gaslighting you into believing you need to grovel to be with him. Okay. Oh, so, and then the OP responds with, I'm already the primary breadwinner, so I don't think that's it. It would mean a lot more income for the family, though, which is a good thing for both of us. Yes, that would mean moving, but it would make the job, but I wouldn't take the job if he's not comfortable with it. Yeah, I think he probably did do it on purpose because he's like, feeling emasculated or something maybe he's definitely he's definitely not he probably definitely is kind of withholding some information it sounds it off. like it if he's not just apologizing for it yeah and he's probably just being kind of a butthole um nata this is definitely a sabotage he definitely sabotaged the terrarium it makes zero sense that he would pr- water an ordinary house plant let alone a terrarium on the day you left for the trip he was not quote unquote trying to help yeah, I can tell him yeah. coming in with, like, the water and be like, <laughs> now she will only love me. <laughs> and just, like, pours water. Yeah, and on <coughs> the day that she left, too. Mm-hmm. Our house pants are my wife's to deal with, and I wouldn't water them unless she asked me to. I'm assuming you have never asked him to touch your terrarium since you've known him. His defense it's only a plan, quote unquote, gives it away. My guess is that he's never liked this terrarium and has just been waiting for a chance to get rid of it. Imagine if he had an old recliner from college that he hauled from place to place and you wanted it gone. If that's not the reason, then he may be wanting to start a fight for deeper reasons than your marriage. All that said, 
it was wrong of you to cancel the trip what without discussing it with him nah. obviously he went on our, your anniversary trip without you would be the least it would be the last anniversary but it would be up to him to agree wrong or not on the level of but but wrong but not on the level of butthole so he says he still says not the butthole anyway nah. regardless edit I did not mean she should go on the trip. I meant she should discuss it re- before rather than canceling. Obviously, she booked it with her money, and she can cancel it without his approval. But I think communication is better than silence. Um, I think she's. I think she's kind of. I think she deserves the right to do that. Um, to just cancel it, especially if Mister Mister Guy is there. Like I guess that's like. <laughs> kill kill all the plants i guess that's a situation of whether or not you want to take the high road yeah and, and that should be up to her to decide if that's yeah. the point that's the case so yeah i mean that's it that's pretty much all the buttholes and not the buttholes um wow some doozies this time yeah Excuse me. so who do you think is the base butthole for certain purposes i'm gonna say that the wife cheating on her husband is the biggest butthole i think the wife cheating on her husband probably Maybe like the the mentally unstable I, I guy. Don't, I don't want to say he's the biggest butthole because he's generally mentally unwell. General, genuinely mentally unwell. Okay, so yeah, if that's if we have to write him off, um, it'd probably be it would probably be the miss. I got miss, I got caught. I, I stumbled into an affair. Oh, remember those old comics that people would do where it was like a PSA about like sex and stuff. And there was like this, there was like this comic series where like these this guy and this girl who would be like in totally doing totally different things, and then like a bunch of like they would like three stooge themselves, like into like having their clothes ripped off, and they end up like cup smashing together. No. And that was like that, and then it would be like sex is never an accident or something like that. I I don't remember that at all. No. I remember seeing those comments. Comments. That sounds I, absolutely yeah. wild. Yeah, and, well, that's kind of like the vibe I'm getting yeah, off by this Yeah, kind of person. like the vibe. So yeah, um, I've been Nathaniel Avila, and I have been Clara Avila, and we'll see you guys tomorrow or soon. Bye. Yeah, Bye. Thank you for listening to a Vision Podcast, home of Wacky Talkies, the Kingdom, Evil Exists, and many more.